Now we're going to talk about the fall of King David. David was king of Israel. He was renowned for his military prowess. He was renowned for his intelligence. He was renowned for his prayerfulness. He was renowned also for his his gift of being a true friend and leader of Israel. But David is going to fall. How did this come about? Well, the Israelites were out in battle, and David decided not to go with them. So he stayed back in the palace. We're going to see the genesis of the fall of David. The first is that David should have been present to his soldiers as their leader. He was negligent in this. How many sins come about because we're negligent in carrying out our, our duties? In other words, giving into the sin of sloth or laziness. And then he takes a long siesta. This is an extension of the sin of laziness. And after he gets up after a siesta, he's walking on the terrace, and he does not watch over his eyes. And he lifts up his gaze and he sees a very attractive woman who's taking a bath. Her name is Bathsheba. He's taking a bath on the roof. So what happens here is David looks at her with his eyes. He lusts after this woman. How many sins do we commit today that are related to a lack of control of our senses? In our modern pornographic world, how many sins come about by looking at the internet, by looking at TV, by looking at movies, by looking at fashion, by looking at the mode? Sin of David is very easily applicable to our own lives. Then David calls Bathsheba down to his papal residence and he has relations with her. He commits adultery. She leaves and sends him a message that she is with child. Now what does David do? David is getting very nervous. So he finds out, finds out that the husband of Bathsheba is one of his soldiers. And it's Uriah the Hittite, who, is the, who worked side by side with Joab, who is the general of the army. So Uriah the Hittite is brought to the palace of King David and David tries to force him to be with his wife so that by having relations with the wife the husband will not know. Back then they did not have DNA tests obviously. But Uriah the Hittite following the religious code of the Jews not to have relations with the wife during a battle period, decides to spend the night outside the palace. So David, what does he do? He brings him in, gives him a meal, gets him drunk, hoping that Urias will go down and have relations with his wife. This he does not do. So as we sin, as we see the fall of David, the sin of David is getting worse and worse and worse. So what does David do? He concocts a very dastardly deed that he's going to carry out. He will place Urias the Hittite in the front of the battle where the battle is most fierce. So David writes out a letter. He gives it to Urias himself who brings it to General Joab of the army in which it is written to put Uriah the Hittite in the front line of battle where the battle is most fierce. And David tells Joab to pull back the troops so that Uriah will be mowed down. And that's exactly what happened. Uriah the Hittite was mowed down and killed on the front line of battle. So David 
committed this terrible sin. And this sin we see was called the chain effect of sin. David was negligent in not going to the battlefield. David gave in, gave in to laziness by taking the long siesta. David well, did not practice custody of the eyes. He, he looked at this, this woman. David lusted after this woman. He committed adultery with this woman. And then this adulterous action, he wanted to cover it up by trying to get Uriah to have relations with his wife, which he did not have. So David ends up by putting on the, him on the front line of the battle, and this innocent man was killed. This is called the chain effect of sin, the domino effect of sin, the snowball effect of sin. I think, my friends, if we meditate in our own lives, we're going to see how this has happened in one way or another. However, being prayerful and vigilant in examining our lives, we'll be able to we'll be able to prevent future sins like this from happening. May the Blessed Mother help us, protect us from future evil, so that we will truly love God with our whole hearts, minds, and souls, and reject sin in our lives.